In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at our latest hurricane season outlook. We're going to be taking a look at the hurricane season of 2023. And let me tell you guys right off the bat, this hurricane season does look to be very, very interesting and very different in many different ways than anything we've really experienced because we do have an El Nino, possibly a very strong one building in at the moment. And that is usually a slower hurricane season, but it's usually partnered with very cold Atlantic temperatures. And this year we have extremely warm temperatures in the Atlantic. So we're moving into very unprecedented territory with the current conditions in the Atlantic. And it's just going to set up for a very interesting hurricane season that could go either way. So we're going to take a lot of this with a grain of salt and actually just try to move through and kind of balance things out and figure out what that's going to look like. On the bottom left hand corner of your screen, you can see that this is using Trilogy Maps, which is my other business. And if you want to check that out, you can check it out in the description and pinned comment down below. We do have all these maps for sale currently at a 50% off discount. And you can even use our code direct for another 33% off of those maps on top of the 50%, which brings it to an absolutely insane deal that you guys cannot miss out on. So go ahead and check them out today. Again, in the pinned comment and description down below. Our first graphic that we're taking a look at here is actually just our different regions that you might hear me kind of describe here. First off, OTS stands for out to sea. And that's going to be anywhere that's not colored here. So this would be considered out to sea. MDR down here is another common one you're going to hear us say. And this is our main development region is what that is short for. And it's called this because mainly most of our tropical systems start out and move across this region. This is our main development region. And at that point, they can either move up into the OTS out to sea region uh, they can move into the Caribbean and up the East Coast or from the Caribbean to the Gulf, uh, or they could just die out in the Caribbean. Or sometimes we see them get really suppressed and go into the Southern Caribbean here. And usually this is the end of a tropical system because it's a very desertous region. So a lot of these areas are very, very different. East Coast, Caribbean, Southern Caribbean, and Gulf of Mexico are pretty obvious. And you'll probably hear me refer to those different areas, uh, but I'll probably draw them out as we're kind of rolling through as well. So we're kind of starting out with an empty map here. This is what it would look like, by the way, if you did buy those trilogy maps, Atlantic hurricane season map, at which point you could draw on it through Photoshop or another program and make it your own. Now, as we roll into the temperature forecast here for the Atlantic, this is going to be sea surface temperatures that we're taking a look at mostly using the current the current temperatures it's very hard to predict what direction these will head in but as of now we have at least slightly above average temperatures sea surface temperatures in most of if not all the yellow areas here so very very warm across a lot of the atlantic here at this point which again is what makes this season so different than any other el nino hurricane season that we've really had because typically we would not see this much above average sea surface temperatures at all during an El Nino hurricane season like this one we're going to be experiencing here. Now, there is a couple of areas that are particularly warm compared to normal. And first off here, we're taking a look at the Caribbean into the Gulf. After this loads in, we will see this. These are very, very high resolution maps. So that's why it takes a second to load sometimes. As you can see, the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean here, we're currently dealing with extremely far above average sea surface temperatures, actually. Conditions are very, very warm in here and actually warmer than our previous update. So we're seeing things much warmer than we were even taking a look at just a little while ago. As we add our second layer here to this, we can see that we actually get another area that is very highly above average as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned here. So off the coast of Africa, dealing with these far above average sea surface temperatures there. Very, very far above average. Now, I know things look very, very warm, but there is some areas right now where we are dealing with some below average sea surface temperatures. And one of the main areas here is going to be the area offshore of the East Coast here, where you can see that we are dealing with some below average sea surface temperatures in here. This is an area that fluctuates really quickly usually, and it can quickly turn into a very warm area. Uh, we do have the Gulf Stream that heads through into this region as well that could warm things significantly in a hurry. So I wouldn't count on this still being the case by the time we're reaching August, September timeframe, which would be the peak of hurricane season. But for now, in late May here, we are dealing with this at this point. Now... As we just take a look here, I'm going to show you guys what we typically deal, deal with here in El Nino's. So we usually see 
increased shear across all of these areas, and, and this is going to be, for the most part, our main development region in here. Where again, we have storms moving across just like this oftentimes. Now, shear typically is going to reduce tropical activity because this means there's a lot of different wind speeds at different layers of the atmosphere. And these are very tall clouds that we see in these tropical systems. So when you have faster wind above very slow wind, it can take the top off of storms and really just break up the, the upward development, the vertical development that we see throughout these storms. In La Nina, we actually see the opposite here. No surprise there, but decreased shear is what we typically see throughout this area during La Nina's. And that's why you might hear that oftentimes La Nina's have much more active hurricane seasons. A lot of that has to do with the shear, the decreased shear in La Nina, increased shear in El Nino, but also you typically see much colder uh, Atlantic conditions during El Nino's and much warmer Atlantic conditions during those La Ninas. So that's another reason, and we're not really seeing that pan out as we've mentioned before, but typically in El Nino's we see that decreased activity. Don't know if that will for sure be the case this year based on what we're seeing now. Now, as far as just development in general, we see less favorable for this kind of main development area here. Uh, this is going to be mostly due to that increased shear. But once we take a look at the Caribbean, the Gulf, the East Coast, things are likely going to be more favorable for development up around these neck of the woods as things have warmed, especially in the Caribbean and the Gulf. And I do expect warming to continue to happen up the East Coast probably, like I said, won't be uh, below average any longer by the time we're reaching the actual hurricane season. And things are even more favorable the closer to the United States you get. So I would probably say that likely we're going to see storms move in and then actually have an easier time developing as they're entering into this region, if they can. So it's kind of a big if uh, they even do enter into these areas. They're going to have an easier time rapidly developing, maybe in some cases, closer to home here which is usually bad news but these storms earlier on in their track with that elevated amount of shear likely we're going to see a little bit harder time for these storms to develop maybe a little bit less frequent with these storms that is kind of the expectations at this point now our new and improved overall forecast here for the hurricane season of 2023 let's take a look at it here completely redrawn uh, we see that things look to be more favorable than we originally expected, I think, here over the main development region. We still expect a little bit of some below average activity, but it looks a lot more favorable with the warming that we've seen in this area than we saw in our last update, which was about a month ago. So things are in the uptrend as far as favorability in here. Less favorable here over the Southern Caribbean. We've talked about this before, how really it does just appear to be very, very dry like normal, and it might even be drier than what is typical. So very, very unfavorable here in the Southern Caribbean. But the Caribbean is going to be one of the most favorable areas as we see extremely uh, favorable here, very, very uh, favorable over the Caribbean with those very warm waters compared to what's even typical currently sitting over this area. The shear usually has a little bit less of a grip of this region. And I overall think we're going to see very favorable conditions over the Caribbean as it is most of the time, but maybe even comparatively to normal. I expect extremely active Gulf conditions here. Uh, this is typically an area that in El Nino hurricane seasons does not struggle to see hurricane activity and typically still sees just as much activity um, in, in those El Nino years. So that is going to be an area that we are looking up for extreme activity, especially with the far above average sea surface temperatures that we see currently set up over this area. That is going to be something that we really need to watch very, very closely. Now we do see a better chance here over uh, your kind of East coast off the East coast area here. That is where we expect plenty of that activity to take place in there. Um, if the storms move in, that's the thing. So we don't say very active or very favorable. There's a better chance that we see storms develop in this area than typical, which it's usually hit or miss if we do or don't see any activity moving up the coast. So that's going to be something we need to watch very closely. I will say we do expect less storms to move into this out to sea region, just based on the kind of jet stream pattern that we expect in the eastern United States. We do expect more troughs than typical in the east. And usually this encourages storms to move towards the United States and not away. So I do expect that storms will likely move west of this area uh, and 
likely into this better chance area more times than not. That is currently what I see based on the jet stream pattern. Unfortunately, that brings a bigger risk to the east coast of the United States and Canada than we typically see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this hurricane season update, guys. This hurricane season outlook with us. We will be updating this a few more times. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell icon for daily notifications as well. Also, be sure to check out the pinned comment and description again for those trilogy maps. They are just the most customizable, highest definition maps you can find anywhere on the internet for creating weather maps. Uh, definitely very, very high value there, especially with the discount we have going on. So check those out today. Also, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.